Hey YouTube, the Mafia 306 here, and this is lesson 3 in the Let's Learn Calculus series covering the precise definition of a limit. And I'm going to apologize in advance because, for one, I know this video is probably going to be a little bit lengthy. Um, you'll know about that before I do, obviously, by just looking at the bottom right and seeing how long the video is. And, but it's a, a very important topic, uh, especially if sorry about that, especially if you uh, want to do anything in math on any kind of theoretical level, this is probably going to be your first introduction to that. And the other thing I want to apologize for is I'm expecting a few phone calls, so I have my phone not on silent, so we might get interrupted in the middle of it, and if that happens, I'm sorry, but hopefully that won't be the case. So. We want to talk about the precise or formal definition of a limit. We've seen multiple times already that uh, just by the definition of a limit, we've had that uh, we know that the limit of this example, for, for example, f of x equals 2x minus 1 if x is not equal to 3, or 6 if x is equal to 3. This is just a piecewise defined function. Um, we know that the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x equals 5. In other words, we can make f of x equal to 5 by taking x sufficiently close to 3. That's how we've always defined them. But this phrase here, x is sufficiently close to 3, is very vague. It doesn't say in particular how close to 3 does x need to be in order so that f of x differs from 5 by, say, less than 0 0.1. So we want to try to quantify that a little bit and just see just how close does x have to be to 3 in order for f of x to differ from 5 by, we'll just say, less than 0 0.1 here. So just a little bit of notation. The distance from x to 3 is going to be the absolute value of x minus 3. That should be very clear and the distance from f of x to 5 should of course be the absolute value of f of x minus 5 very clearly. Now I do have to erase and write and rewrite and all of that on this board so I do apologize for the delay. If anybody wants to buy me a much larger whiteboard then ha, donations are greatly accepted <laughs> but until then we have to make do with the small board. Um, so we're going to introduce a number delta here. This is just a lowercase delta. It's a Greek letter delta. And we're just going to say that we want the absolute value of f of x minus 5 to be less than 0 0.1 if the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than delta. That's how we are defining our delta. In other words, we want f of x to differ from 5 by less than 0.1 whenever the distance from x to 3 is less than this pre-specified number delta. So, but we also of course want that x is not equal to 3 because we're trying to find the limit, obviously. So we have if the absolute value of x minus 3 is greater than 0, then obviously x is not equal to 3. That's just, you know, very straightforward common sense. Al not even algebra, just addition, subtraction, all of that. So we can write the absolute value of f of x minus 5, in other words, the distance from f of x to 5, is less than 0 0.1 if 0 is less than x minus 3 is less than delta. So we just, we're working with this top definition here, and we just copy the left part down. But then we use the fact that if x minus 3 is greater than 0, in other words, if the distance 
if, if the absolute value of x minus 3 is greater than 0, then we know that x is not equal to 3. So then we can expand it to this definition here. We know that x minus 3 is greater than 0, but we know that it's less than delta. So we can further restrict our uh, domain, if you will, of uh, x minus 3 here to be between 0 and delta. So I'm just going to pick a number here that works. Um, and I won't show you where it comes from just yet, but I will show you very shortly. But this is just to kind of show this method and to kind of, I guess, lead into this. Um, so if we say that 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 3, is less than 0 0.05 okay we know that 0 0.05 equals 0 0.1 over 2 okay and now 0 0.1 is our distance here between f of x and 5 so then so if this is true, okay, then we have that the absolute value of f of x minus 5, okay, and I, I'm really sorry that I keep uh, hiding the whiteboard and writing more stuff on it. it, it's the only way I know how to do this. I'm sorry if that's distracting. Uh, we have that the absolute value of f of x minus 5, and now we just want to plug in for f of x. Well, here we know that x is not equal to 3, so we're going to use, I erased it already, but we're going to use 2x minus 1, because that's, because that's what our function was when x is not equal to 3. So this is equal to the absolute value of 2x minus 1 minus 5, which is equal to the absolute value of 2x minus 6, which equals 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3, which is less than 0 0.1, just by definition of this up here. That f of x minus 5, the absolute value of that is less than 0 0.1 if x minus 3 is less than delta. And we picked our delta to be 0 0.05. So we can, so we derive this down here. So in other words, this is the same thing as saying that the absolute value of f of x minus 5 is less than 0 0.1 if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 0 0.05. So just wrote this bottom line here. The absolute value of f of x minus 5 is less than 0 0.1 if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 0 0.05. So thus, this number here that we came up with, 0 0.05, if we refer back up to the top here, okay, this is what we have. This is what we have. So we can see right away that delta is 0 0.05. Which means that x must be within 0 0.05 of 3 in order for f of x to differ from 5 by less than 0 0.1. So we have, excuse me, we have in effect quantified how closely to x, or how closely to 3 x has to be in order to be different from 5 by a, a pre-described amount. And that's going to be the essence of proving limits. So let me just erase the whiteboard here. Okay. So we did 0 0.1 and we just kind of picked that arbitrarily. So the question is, you know, what if we want to be more precise? What if instead of 0 0.1 we want 
to be within 0 0.01 of 5. Well, if we do the same method that we did, then you'll see that then delta equals 0 0.005. That's just if you do the same thing that we did just a couple of minutes ago, you'll find delta equals 0 0.005. And I encourage you guys, those of you watching, to try and see if you can come up with that delta and show that it works. So this is great and everything, but in order for 5 to be the precise limit or the exact limit of f of x as x approaches 3 in our example, then we must be able to take, we, need, we must be able to bring it below any positive number. You know, we pick 0 0.1 and then we pick 0 0.01 we need to be able to take that difference below any positive number that we want 1 times 10 to the negative 478 okay we need to be able to take it less than that in order for that value 5 to be the limit as x approaches 3 so we need to be able to bring it below any arbitrary positive number and we're gonna call that arbitrary positive number epsilon the Greek letter epsilon so we have as before now just rewriting what we wrote earlier for epsilon I'm not going to go through the whole thing just you know the basic thing we had that the absolute value of f of x minus 5 is less than epsilon if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than delta equals epsilon over 2. So here we have, let me write that a little bit bigger, I'm, I apologize, I'm still pretty new at doing this, so bear with me guys. So we had earlier the absolute value of f of x minus 5 is less than epsilon now, this arbitrary positive number, if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than delta. And we found from the examples that we did with 0 0.1 and 0 0.01 that delta is equal to epsilon over 2. And that's just kind of what we found. So this leads to the definition that we can write the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals L if this is the definition that we're writing now. I'll erase this. No, no, I won't erase it. Just focus below the line right now. The limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l. We can write that. We can say that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is l if. If what? I'll give you guys a couple of moments to write it, maybe come up with it, and then I'll supply the rest of the definition. Hope you guys were able to at least get started on it. Don't want to waste too much time. So, we can say this if for every number epsilon greater than zero, there is a delta greater than zero. Okay. We're picking epsilon greater than zero to be arbitrary. It's going to be the arbitrary distance from the value of our limit here. If for every number epsilon greater than zero, there is a delta greater than zero, delta is the number we're trying to find, such that the distance from f of x to our limit is less than epsilon whenever the distance from x to a is less than delta. 
So if we can show for any given epsilon that the distance between f of x and our limit is less than epsilon whenever there's a delta such that the distance between x and a is less than delta, then we can say that L is the limit of f of x as x approaches a. And this is the formal definition of the limit. So let's go on ahead and do a quick couple of examples here. I don't want to keep you guys too terribly long, although I'm afraid I'm going to. erasing the whiteboard here. Which reminds me, I need a bigger eraser for this whiteboard too. It's okay, erasers are cheap. Okay, 